The, the second question this week actually is quite closely related to that uh, first one that I've just read you. So let me read the second question. It goes like this. Question two. Should we expect the presence of the mind in species who have no speech or language? In other words, is language essential for the mind? Does language have to be involved in order to process or make proper sense of the thoughts activated by feelings? I'd like to emphasize, in answering this question, I'd like to emphasize this last bit. Um, you know, does language have to be involved in order to process or make proper sense of the thoughts activated by feelings? Uh, the, 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 the phrase, make proper sense of, implies you know, degrees uh, of properness. And um, the question of the role of language in, in, in the mind has everything to do with degrees. Um, so let me address it this way. I, certain, I, th I think it's a big problem in our general way of thinking about the mind that we start with human minds as the sort of um, paradigm or the, 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 the uh, um, paradigmatic example of what a mind is. We all know from our own personal experience what our minds are like, so we think, okay, that's what a mind is. Now, you know, let's see who else has a thing like this, which other creatures have a, have a mind like we do. And of course, um, when it comes to the, the role of language uh, in the mind, we are more or less unique. So that would lead you to the conclusion, which is the essence of what this question is asking about. It, it would lead you to the conclusion, well, then, therefore, only us humans have minds, and um, language certainly is intrinsic to the human mind. But if you think about it for a second, it's kind of absurd. It's an absurdity to imagine that all of a sudden, you know, a few tens of thousands of years ago, uh, human language appears, and with that, the mind appeared in nature. You know, that in all the other creatures um, and all the other eons of time in which there have been living creatures on our planet, uh, there was no mind until suddenly one day, bingo, with language, the mind appeared. That's just not how evolution works. There's every reason to suppose that there's some sort of precursor of the human mind um, in, uh, in non-human species or in pre-human species, in our ancestors before they acquired language. There would have been some sort of mind um, that was not identical with the mind we have now, uh, but which was nonetheless um, the, the um, sort of prototype for the mind. And then you go backwards and backwards and backwards, and it's a very interesting question um, to uh, ponder at what point uh, in evolution did the mind appear and what form did it take, uh, as opposed to the mind that we now have um, in, in the current state of our species. Um, I'm going to discuss all of these things in this course at great length, so I, I, again, I'm not going to elaborate too much now in this introductory week, but I will uh, give some sort of uh, foretaste um, of, of where we're heading by telling you that there is a part of the brain, of the human brain, um, that is known as the periaqueductal gray, and uh, this part of the brain generates consciousness. In fact, it is the most intense consciousness-producing tissue in the human brain. Uh, it's a small, uh, a tiny little area, size of a jelly bean. That's the smallest area of brain tissue which, when damaged, uh, there is a total loss of consciousness. So that's what I mean when I say that's the most condensed or concentrated consciousness-producing tissue that, that, that we have in our brains. Now, the interesting thing is that many other creatures have periaqueductal gray. In fact, all vertebrates uh, have periaqueductal gray. And uh, so that dates... Um, if, well, first of all, let me say, what reason do we have to believe that the periaqueductal gray also generates consciousness in other creatures? Well, that's a very difficult matter. How, how do you know um, whether it's doing, uh, in an animal that can't speak, how do you know that it has feelings? Well, the fact is, even in an animal that can speak, you don't know if it has feelings because it might just be a zombie that you know, has this program in it that makes it say, I have feelings. But you still can't actually yourself observe those feelings. This is something I'm also going to talk about a lot uh, next week. Uh, the point is, all the evidence uh, suggests, if, if, if you tell me you have feelings, all the evidence suggests that you do. And uh, all the evidence suggests that the essence of the consciousness uh, produced by your brain uh, has everything to do with the periaqueductal gray. The same can be said of all other creatures that have this, this tissue, that if you if you make a prediction 
about what will happen if you damage that part of the brain, uh, your, your prediction is confirmed. The animal will fall into a coma. Uh, if you make a prediction as to what will happen, if you stimulate it, uh, the animal will have a very strong emotional state. Its behavior demonstrates the emotional state that you predicted, and uh, so on. So you know, there's every reason to believe that every creature with that structure um, has a mind. There is no question about some of these vertebrates uh, having anything beginning to resemble language. I'm talking of fishes and lizards and snakes. You know, all, all of these creatures um, have periaqueductal gray, but they have nothing resembling language. So I am of the view that the mind is something entirely independent of language. The mind long predates the emergence of the mind in nature, long predates the emergence um, of language. That's not to say that language doesn't do something fundamentally different to the mind. And that comes back to what I was saying in the first question. Language seems very important for awareness in the technical sense of being able to reflect upon your mental states. Language enables you to abstract yourself from the raw phenomenal feeling and think about the feelings. And it's that type of mentation, reflective mentation, um, self-awareness, if you will, um, that, is, that is so uh, deeply bound up with language. So I hope that was clear. That's my attempt at an answer to the second question.